we're in the Grocers Hall in the City of London and we've got a conference all day, a CEPR conference all day, with a good exploration of some of the issues, some interesting thoughts on new things to explore and yes, hopefully a few conclusions about changes that should be made. We have been through the worst financial crisis in over 70 years. We're looking at a major step change in terms of the way that regulation is done for the financial services industry. And this is a really opportune time to take a step back and really look at how different policy prescriptions will work and what's really appropriate. To actually to explore some of the cutting edge issues right now, like uh, what to do about bank resolution, which has clearly been one of the major issues of the day. Uh, what, I mean, now that the capital requirements issues are more or less settled, uh, what, what are the main things that remain? And uh, we've set out quite a number of these. If you get to the resolution point, then you've got a huge, huge issue to deal with, which is that bankruptcy laws are still different. You can't actually get that organised in a way that would be sensible to the fact that taxpayers just don't want to really have to share, you know, actually take on the burden. And it follows from the maths that the tax on short-term funding does not need to depend on the individual characteristics of each bank. So it can be a flat levy. Maybe we can qualify, of course, the real world is more complex than the model. It's the coincidence of a whole load of thinkable events that really causes a problem. And if you look at what happened, yes markets, yes credit, yes too much growth, a whole load of stuff happening, yes people uh, being willful with the way they manage their liquidity all at the same time. So, I mean, you know, when we look at adverse scenarios, we look at combinations, horrible combinations of lots of things, events. And every time the markets could find a way to get out of that. And I remember in Basel very often when we saw the reaction, we say, well, the markets always, you know, has found a way to deal with these things until we got the, the, big, the big shock later on. Because we have a, a global regime for capital of banks, and we don't have anything equivalent for insurance company, this is a major risk that we are facing. In Europe we have Solvency 2, but there is nothing equivalent in the world similar to Solvency 2. I, I hear these things. Uh, we are increasing capital. We have a stronger Pillar 1. Who needs Pillar 2 and Pillar 3? We don't need, I mean, all this, you know, supervisory uh, intensity on over the banks. If we have a stronger regulation, we need less of Pillar 2 and, and Pillar 3. I think this is a major mistake. I'm very realistic. Uh, you have this uh, nice saying in the English language, he who pays a piper calls a tune. And uh, I revert it and say, he, and that is the home supervisor, who as the supervisor calls a tune and has a responsibility, has to pay the funeral or the taxpayer of his country. That's the only realistic solution. We have some kind of three objectives that we're trying to uh, do at the same time. One is, is global financial stability, which we need, of course. Uh, we also like to have international cooperation and cross-border financial flows, uh, which we, uh, is also important for growth and for competition. Uh, at the same time, what we have at the moment still is national authorities uh, that deal with the national agencies and national banks. So this is the financial trilemma. This is what we call the trilemma. So it's three uh, objectives that you cannot really achieve at the same time. So you have to choose among those. There's been a lot of talk today about pessimists and optimists. Which one of those would you say you are? I'm, a, I'm an optimist going forward, and I think that probably the worst is behind us. Huh? Uh, but having said that, we cannot ignore the type of shock we have seen in our financial systems in the last three years and, and in our economies in the last three years. So optimism, yes. Realism, we need to be aware of what is at stake to do what we need to do in the area of financial regulatory reform and, and structural reforms more, more, more widely. Definitely optimist. I think that uh, the regulation will change and that the regulation will change for the better. There are a number of things we haven't understood and uh, this will allow us to draft a much better regulation. The problem is that if a systemic crisis like the one we have witnessed occurs every 80 years, because the previous one was in 29, 
then you know it may be the case that uh, there is pressure to decrease the regulatory standards and say, you know, now we have understood as uh, in the title of this great book by Rogoff uh, and Reinhardt, it's this time is different. Thank you.